Sagittarius. Welcome to your super blue blood moon lunar total lunar eclipse in Leo at 11 degrees of Leo on January 31st and the week following until February 7th. Gosh, I was able to get that out. And um, so what I'm going to be doing is a simple three card spread, tarot spread, with my Morgan Greer deck and I'm going to start with a, um, one tarot card from my Rider Waite deck and an oracle card from Keepers of the Light just for that eclipse um, and what it, what it symbolizes for you. Uh, and then do that three card spread for the following week. Where this is going to fall for Sagittarius is the ninth house. And um, that's even more, you could call it um, important because Sagittarius rules the ninth house. So the ninth house is the house of the higher mind. So university level education or teaching and it's the house of publishing it's the house it's the god house so your philosophical framework your religious framework you know how you view life from that perspective uh, when it comes to meaning the meaning of life and how you function within it so it's also the area of uh, foreign travel it's a very expansive energy because Jupiter tends to bring expansion with it and Jupiter rules his house because Jupiter is the ruler of Sagittarius. So what could this be for some people? Well, there might be some um, something that you've been working on so that you can take a long trip overseas or maybe you're finishing up a long trek um, somewhere far away and you're going to be coming home and that is a shift maybe some of you have been writing something that just suddenly takes off because it, and it, you know it's not necessarily maybe you're going to publish it but some people may have already published it and it like it gets a second life okay so I'm shuffling the cards let me see What is going on here? Oh, that's very interesting. Very interesting. Okay. And okay. I'm going to pick a clarification card. Okay. So, let us see what's happening. Okay. So, for the eclipse, the um, Rider Waite Tarot, I got the Four of Pentacles. This is a card of financial stability. Sometimes this can indicate somebody who is holding on very tightly to their finances. Um, but this generally would suggest that Sagittarians are doing pretty well at this time and that this is connected to the eclipse. So whatever that means for you, um, obviously when I was uh, talking about how, you know, where it falls in your particular chart, it's, it's going to be different 
if you are watching for your sun sign, because you also have a natal chart, which it can be any, uh, it can be any rising sign. And so your, your um, house where this eclipse falls may be a totally different one. Maybe it's the second house. And this is the house of earned income for you. And this could be some kind of um, situation where you get like a real boost to your income for some reason. Because remember that um, lunar eclipses are powerful full moons. And a lot of times people say, yeah, you know, full moons are when things are taken away. But that's not always the case. Sometimes full moons um, can bring things to a head, to, but a culmination. If it, you know, we talk about ending, like taking away, but a culmination means that you've been working hard at something and you're finally seeing the results pay off. Okay, you know, just like at new moons, it's about planting seeds. This is like harvest time. And um, so I tend to think of full moons in terms of this kind of prosperity that the Four of Pentacles seems to uh, indicate. And then we have here the, the, the card, um, this is Keepers of the Light, and this is Sanat Kumara, Light Activation. Shine your light, your internal guidance is coming through loud and clear. And I'm going to read from the booklet to give you more info on who this person is and what it might represent. Sanat Kumara means eternal youth, is an advanced cosmic light being who is dedicated to helping the earth rise up towards the light. He is, as far as I'm concerned, the leader of the Keepers of the Light. He has been acknowledged as a god in Hinduism and in the Mahabharata story, which has come down from heaven, bearing God's divine plan. In more recent times, he has been acknowledged as coming from Venus and bringing through unconditional love. He has eyes that are made of the cosmos. Let me see. Wow. <laughs> with the ability to penetrate the soul and activate its brightest light yet. He can seem otherworldly because his looks are beyond human. He is a being of the light, shining with the purest intentions. He is the twin flame of Lady Venus. Together they activate the heart and light of those who welcome their help so they can shine brighter than ever. You are here to light up the world. You may feel that you're being pushed or that there's a lot going on at once. And this is because your energy is magnetic to others and they want it in their life. Take the time to listen to your inner voice. Remember the cosmic light of heaven and draw it into you. That is all you need to do to inspire the world. And definitely Sagittarians are people who like to inspire others in whatever way that they do, you know. And... Um, um, while I was saying that, I was just thinking of that Four of Pentacles. I couldn't stop thinking about it. The other thing to remember is that uh, Saturn has gone into Capricorn. That's the second house for Sagittarius of earned income. So Saturn, you know, connects with that Pentacles, the Four of Pentacles, because it's that foundational thing of um, trying to get something either started or continued that's going to pay off in the long run and keep you anchored in this constant flow of wealth being generated for you. Okay, so now let's look at the week ahead. We have in the past position the King of Cups. So there may have been an older male uh, sometimes this can be a father or the father of your child um, who is a mature, emotionally mature male. Could be someone who is Cancer, Scorpio, or Pisces, or they have that prominent in their chart, so you can feel that they are caring. They may be very um, paternal, uh, you know. But even when I say paternal, there's a there's a masculine quality, but there's that feminine of the cups where they are very like, you know, are you, are you warm enough? Put on your jacket. Like if this is somebody you're dating, they have your well-being, um, 
as their prime concern. Um, you may have been seeing a counselor for some reason. Um, we do have for the current energy the the devil card. Um, so if this is a card of addiction sometimes, so you may have been seeing somebody about some addiction that you're trying to rid yourself of. It can even be an addictive relationship that is um, bad for you. This connects to Saturn, Satan, you know, but I don't want to emphasize Satan because that, that actually a lot of people fear Saturn because they think, especially Sagittarians, because they think of it as this um, parent that never lets them have any fun. And um, actually Saturn can be quite helpful in keeping people, not just keeping people in line, but in improving their lives so that your life runs uh, smoothly and you're not um, bouncing from one crisis to the, the next. But um, with that Four of Pentacles, with the Eclipse energy, you may find out something that is, uh, perhaps it is a, a Capricorn individual or they have it prominent in their chart, and you realize that this person um, isn't good for you. And... Um, Maybe you realize it because you've met that King of Cups and you can see the contrast in the two people. Now, um, I did get two cards. I did have a, clear, a clarification card. I almost feel like getting another one because both of these um, cards are really not ways that I usually end readings. The number five is the number of instability. You know, unlike the number four, which represents stability. But the number five connects to a lot of change, upheaval. And with the Five of Cups, we're talking about some kind of grief, disappointment. Now, this may relate to a relationship that um, didn't go the way you had hoped it would, but it could be career. And I should have mentioned that with the Devil card, that perhaps some Sagittarians are staying in a job just for the money. And that is really dragging you down because you know deep in your heart that it's not good for you for whatever reason and that it has become like this um, albatross around your neck. And I did pick also the Five of Pentacles, this lack consciousness, which really goes along with um, all of this, where you may be feeling like you can't leave a relationship because there's nothing else to take its place. Um, and so you're being too cautious about it. Let me just pick a, another card because I want to... I want to see if I can find... I'm just going to shuffle these cards. Well, looky here. The chariot. Now, this is a card of success, of victory. So, I'm thinking that these two fives are residual energies. There's something, um, by the way, this connects to cancer. So, maybe that's a cancer person um, that's in your life, Sagittarius. But it, just talking about it from what it could mean for you professionally, um, maybe you have felt like disappointed about something, you were promised something, didn't come through, but ultimately you will be uh, successful. I think you have to focus though. That's what the chariot talks about. If you notice, he's holding onto the reins of the horse and he's holding his head up high, but he's in control. You know, it's so easy for the horse to drive the driver um, if the if the driver doesn't hold on tight enough to the reins. The reins can be um, looked at symbolically as your thoughts. And if you don't, if you do not get a hold of them, they will take on a life of their own. And they will create a lot of um, fear-based thinking, lack-based thinking, which Sagittarians normally don't have, but because of some of the more challenging transits that we have been through 
it's entirely possible that you may, like, especially we just uh, had the uh, Saturn and Sagittarius, and that has kind of um, challenged Sagittarians who are ruled by Jupiter, you know, to to kind of bring things down, condense them into reality. And even brought some lessons, some karmic life lessons in the process for those who had to be dragged kicking and screaming. So now is the time to heal from disappointments that have um, kind of plagued you for the last few years and to really feed your mind with positivity so that these kinds of um, thoughts of limitation do not take over and you will be successful as the chariot suggests. Okay, well I hope you enjoyed this Sagittarius and good luck to you uh, for this eclipse and the first week in February, where has the time gone? If you'd like a private reading, please click on the link below. My website is rainandmoonastrology.com. Have a great week. Take care, bye.